Welcome to TriMet 101. Today I'd like to talk about the Montgomery Park Portland Streetcar Extension. This video will be in two halves. The first part will be just pretty much factual information about the project, and the second half will be my opinions about the project, as I find this quite interesting. So, what is the streetcar extension? Well, I will leave a link in the description as a starting point for your research, if you'd like to do that. Now, you can go through quite a deep rabbit hole with the links and different websites and things, but I'm not going to cover all of the details here, as this video would turn out to be four hours long, but let's talk about how it all started. In 2009, there was the streetcar concept plan, the streetcar system concept plan, and there were several corridors that could be identified for future streetcar service. From there, MP2H was formed, and that stands for Montgomery Park to Hollywood. It's a corridor that can be redeveloped and that can officially, officially listed, can have future streetcar service. Now, if you've taken a look at the Montgomery Park area for a while, it's ripe for redevelopment. There's lots of abandoned buildings and it's just generally kind of sad looking. And of course, the staple of the Montgomery Park area is the Montgomery Park building, which has its own rich history. And it used to be a Montgomery Ward. And then that eventually closed down and the word Ward was removed and changed to Park. So it's now Montgomery Park. And this is a historic, centrally located building within the district. There's more to that story, but we're getting distracted. We should probably talk about the Portland streetcar. So anyways, have you heard in New York... Okay, no, no, no. Streetcars. An extension of the NS line is planned to the Montgomery Park building by extending up 23rd Avenue down Wilson and Roosevelt Streets to 27th Avenue. Several other projects would be included here too, including sewer upgrades, general traffic updates, and better access to the Forest Park trailhead, and more. Four new stops would be constructed, one at 23rd in Raleigh, Roosevelt and 24th westbound, or Wilson and 24th eastbound, and Wilson and 27th at the Montgomery Park building. Development can and will happen to this area, and it may look like a wasteland now, but in the future, there could be upwards of 3,000 new housing units throughout this area. And we don't know exactly what that's going to look like as of now, but it generally won't be single-family housing. It'll be much denser than that. It is still downtown Portland, and it's there to attract riders. It's a transit project, so having higher density is going to work out better. Additional office spaces and mixed-use uses could pop up in this area as well. As far as the timeline, we're actually further along on this than you might think. Later this year, the city, I think, will apply for federal funding for this project, and construction could begin in 2026, which, side note, is actually the same year the interstate bridge could be reconstructed, which I made an entire video about recently that I will leave a card for up there. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to construct this line, and it could be operational by the end of the decade, if everything stays on time, which we know how that all goes. Alright, opinion time. Overall, I think this transit project is actually pretty good. It may seem weird building a transit extension to the middle of some industrial wasteland. Transit to nowhere? That's weird. Except, it's actually not that weird, because development can and will happen and is already planned to happen in this area. So it will only be weird for the first little bit after it opens. The area will improve. Every... You gotta think of how cities long, long ago, before the car was invented, how cities popped up. There were train tracks that would connect from one side of the country to another. And some people might decide, you know what, we're going to build some buildings right there at this train line where there's passenger trains every single day. And if that becomes successful, we'll build more buildings and more buildings and more buildings until you eventually have an entire city. I am greatly oversimplifying here, but the point is, the train tracks and the train came first. 
then the development came. That's how cities are born, at least how they were a very, very long time ago. And it's a very similar concept here. Yeah, you're putting transit to nowhere, and it's like, uh, why is there public transit here? But because development is already planned and will absolutely happen, at least we hope, it doesn't mean, it means the project is a little less weird. The key takeaway here is that if you build the transit first, people hopefully will start using it. And then once the development is constructed, people will have access to excellent transit from day one. That's important. Okay, here's the first big issue that I have. This entire extension is planned to be off wire meaning we will need battery-powered streetcars. Streetcars that we don't have. Sure, the Brookville streetcars do have this capability, but does it work? I don't know. None of us knows, because none of the streetcar operates this way currently. So because you want this area to look 2% less ugly and want to spend a little less money on a friggin' wire, yeah, let's just force all the entire streetcar system to now have to operate partially on battery power. Us Portlanders don't know how battery-operated streetcars perform. Do they have problems? I don't know. The electric buses sure had problems when they first came out, and they still do sometimes. And when the battery electric buses go out of service, you can just replace them with diesel buses for a while until the problem's fixed. But what are you going to do here when the streetcars aren't working? Replace them with diesel streetcars or something? This isn't going to work. I mean, come on. Add a wire. It will fix all of the problems. The rest of the entire system already has overhead wires. Streetcar systems with overhead wires have existed for well over a century. It's not that big of a deal, and it is a very short extension. Just add the wires. Oh, but this will save on cost. And transit projects are very expensive. Will it? Really, will it? Think about this very closely. Yes, it will actually save money in the short term because, well, you won't have to spend money on electrifying more of the system and adding wires. But then you're going to have to buy specially made streetcars that can operate on battery power so that they're zero emissions. Oh, wait a second, the streetcars are already zero emissions, but okay. Then you need heavy batteries on the roof, which takes emissions to make those and have questionable labor laws, which I will not touch on here. And if these battery streetcars have reliability problems, which in my opinion is a realistic assumption to make, then you're going to have to pour more money, more time, and more resources into getting those fixed, rather than just adding a wire. Tell me which one sounds more expensive, pouring a bunch of resources into creating these specially made, so probably more expensive, streetcars, or just using the existing infrastructure we already have and just adding a friggin' wire. A normal streetcar, like the ones we already have, don't have these sort of drawbacks. Just build a normal streetcar line. Don't try and get all fancy with it and, ooh, cutting edge technology. We have technology that works. Just expand that. And next thing, okay, I'm all fired up, I'm sorry. I have more to talk about, though. Whew. 23rd Avenue. The project would like to keep all on-street parking on 23rd Avenue, even during construction. In fact, they really emphasize that they want to make the fewest amount of impacts possible to parking or anything. Okay, cool, I guess. Construction only lasts a couple years, but a streetcar line could last a lifetime or more. So let me tell you something. In a decade, no one will remember how sucky it was during construction. Nobody will care. As far as trying to preserve all the on-street parking on 23rd Avenue, I don't really understand that decision either. I want you to imagine if you remove the on-street parking on at least one side of the street and instead made a nice bike path and not just paint a white stripe for a little painted bicycle gutter. I mean a real actual bike lane that's fully separated from the sidewalk and 23rd Avenue. You know, 
something that actually moves people, not just a bunch of metal boxes on wheels that sit there and do nothing and sometimes get in the way of the streetcar tracks. And if you listen really close, you might hear some car addicts come up with this golden phrase. But, but, where will I park? Well, not on 23rd Avenue. But you can park on 24th Avenue, or 25th Avenue, or 26th Avenue, or 22nd Avenue, or 21st Avenue, or 20th Avenue. You have plenty of options. And if you truly want to find on-street parking anywhere near 23rd Avenue, well, after the streetcar extension, I wouldn't recommend parking on 23rd Avenue at all. Because y if you park on 23rd Avenue, you're putting yourself in danger of potentially being hit by a streetcar or colliding with something in that regard. So if you park on another street, you wouldn't have to worry about that anyways. I'm telling you, the on-street parking here, it doesn't make sense to keep it. It doesn't make sense on the entire streetcar network. I would really like to see protected bike lanes and not just a white stripe, actually protected, separated bike lanes where today's on-street parking is on 10th and 11th Avenue, where the streetcar is really close to the on-street cars, because it just makes sense. I'd also like to briefly mention streetcar service. If the plan here is to run streetcars frequently, which it should be, then we may want to think about adding another streetcar yard somewhere because we're gonna run out of room at the yard under I-405. Now, whether or not this streetcar yard gets built at all, I don't know. I don't think it's a part of the project right now, but it may be worth looking at somewhere along the alignment where we could eventually store some streetcars if we need to do that. Now time for other stuff. I made a video quite a while ago now on what I believe to be 12 elements of designing a good streetcar system. I'll leave a card for that right there. And honestly, I think Portland does pretty good with the streetcars. They are painfully slow and they need traffic signal priority, but that's all stuff that can be maybe hopefully done later. Let's not ruin it by making dumb decisions that other cities have made. Let's just build good, reliable transit don't try and reinvent the wheel. Electric streetcars that touch a pantograph overhead or any sort of overhead wire have existed since the 1880s. It's not a new technology and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Again, the wheel is an absolutely ancient technology that we still use everywhere. Battery power streetcars are cutting edge new technology that just seems like an excuse to just add batteries into certain things so that we can save a few bucks, which is false on so many levels. Look, I'm sorry for ranting. This is something that I'm passionate about, and I don't want to come off as rude or arrogant. I'm just trying to drive a point home. <laughs> drive. Four words. Just build good transit. Don't make weird decisions and try and cut costs that aren't actually costs that you'll be cutting in the long run. Definitely think about what this means long term if you try and use these cutting edge technologies that we don't even know if they're any good or not. Make transit projects for the people. Don't cater toward cars and trying to preserve the car spaces. We do that far too much despite cars being quite dangerous and large inefficient uses of space. They do not move people in an efficient manner compared to public transit. This is a public transit project. I don't care about the cars that are involved and that are affected. Unfortunately, it might be too late to change things for now, but we can always come back and fix certain things later down the road, which is too bad that we might have to do it that way. But yeah, I think I need to go cool off. Maybe I should go ride a train or something. All right, wake me up when I'm in Gresham, and thank you for watching.